Welcome everybody to another live edition of AEW Dynamite Breakdown here on Twitch. I am your host, the Lazarus Man. You are watching twitch.tv slash evilaz905. That's twitch.tv slash evilaz905. Or you may be watching this on my YouTube channel, The Lazarus Effect. And like I said, I am the Lazarus Man and we're going to talk AEW Dynamite and we're going to break it down and I'm going to give you my opinions and thoughts and if you've got anything to say feel free to leave an opinion a thought anything <clears throat> let's get started they start the match out or they start the night out with a great match Nick Jackson versus Ray Phoenix first time Nick Jackson apparently has been in a singles match since 2015 Ray Phoenix of course has been in tons of scenic, uh, singles matches and whew, what a way to start the show this might be this almost was the match of the night, uh, but it was good to see some solo work from these two guys. We've only really seen them do tag team wrestling in AEW. So what do we see? Um, I mean, what else would we ex what what else would we expect? Fast paced match, high spots galore. Um, really, what a great way to start the show. It was a great win from Phoenix. Uh, there's not a lot I can say about this match other than the fact that it was pretty much classic stuff from both of them. Um, Phoenix, this is more of a singles veteran. Not showing Nick the respect at the end. You know, he did the uh, old handshake and Ray Phoenix walked away. I'm really loving the rivalry between these two teams. Ciro Miedo. I hope I said that right. I probably butchered it. That's pretty awful. So, what a great match from those two. Phoenix versus Nick Jackson. What did you think? I'd like to hear what you have to say. The next match of the night was Britt Baker versus Hikaru Shida. And I'm loving the women's wrestling on... Whoa. I'm loving the women's wrestling here on AEW. Uh, firstly, uh, I'm a big Shida fan. I think her look is really awesome. She looks like she stepped out of like a, a fighting video game. Um, she fits right into the AEW aesthetic, and I think it's really cool. I'm a big fan of Brits as well, uh, and she's getting better and better each week. What I really liked from her in this match was her capacity to sell the match. I mean, she really took a beating from Sheeta the whole time. Um, she got busted open, which, look, whenever someone gets busted open and just keeps going, I'm, I like that. She looked pretty badass, even though she was getting whooped. Um, Sheeta really had control of this match the entire time. And like I said, Britt was really selling it. And that seems to be her strong point right now in AEW is that she's kind of selling adversity when it's coming her way. She's had a few really good wins, uh, but when she loses, she actually looks strong. Like she looks like she's really getting beaten down <laughs> and th that's good. That's a good thing. Um, so Britt shows a lot of tenacity, but Sheeta earned that victory and she really pummeled her the entire time. Uh, this makes Sheeta the number one contender to the title and I'd like to see a, a Sheeta Riho match. Hopefully that's coming. Uh, <clears throat> next thing we had was a cool promo from the Dark Order in sort of the form of an infomercial culty kind of thing. I, you know, I didn't know, I don't really like the Dark Order. I've said that before. I think they're kind of Eh, as far as being dark, but this is a cool new twist. Um, they really packaged it good, sort of this place where people can belong and they'll make you belong and you can be just like them. Uh, so it kind of raises their profile to me just a little bit. Uh, you know, it's not, not about their wrestling. I, well, I kind of don't think they're exciting as wrestlers either, but at least maybe the gimmick is going to heat up a little bit. Uh, I don't know if other people are behind them. Uh, I'm just not a fan. So after that sweet little promo, we had the AEW Dynamite Dozen Battle Royale. Uh, some cool surprises here. Let's see. So in this match, uh, Hangman Page, who apparently is has severed his relationship with the uh, the Elite. So that's interesting. Orange Cassidy, Chuck Taylor, Kip Sabian with Penelope Ford, uh, Jimmy Havoc, Jungle Boy, Marco Stunt. Pentagon, Sonny Kiss, Joey Janela, MJF, and Billy Gunn. 
<laughs> that was kind of a shocker. But Billy looks like he's in great shape and he can still wrestle. So that's good. Uh, MJF gets rid of Sunny Kiss fast. Everyone gangs up on Billy Gunn. Uh, Gunn takes out, takes out Stunt. Havoc starts stapling everyone. Sean Spears interferes and, and heats up his little feud with Joey Janela. I wonder what they're working towards. Hopefully a really high stakes um, match that is sort of in Janela's wheelhouse. You know, like a no holds barred or something like that. It kind of feels like that. that's what they're going towards. Uh, I saw I saw Sean Spears when he was with NXT in a match. With, and this is an incredible match. This is sort of just going off onto a tandem. But he was in a tag team match with Shinsuke Nakamura as his partner versus Samoa Joe and uh, Bobby Roode. And really, it was an incredible match. And, and I'd like to see Spears you know, go up to that level where I saw him in NXT. This is a live show, not a, um, not, not, you know, full sale university. Uh, but to go back to AEW, what are they working towards with him and Janela? Hopefully something, like I said, no holds barred. Uh, I thought it was an okay battle royale. It wasn't, um, the best thing in the world. Uh, but you know, we saw MJF throw, uh, the most over guy out of the ring in Orange Cassidy after Orange Cassidy did his little shin kicks to uh, Billy Gunn, which was pretty awesome. Billy, of course, <laughs> uh, laughed it off. Hangman Page and Jungle Boy seem like they're going to be the last two, but MJF uh, secretly hid and then eliminated Jungle Boy. And so uh, it's going to be Page versus MJF next weekend. Well, well how is that going to play? former member of the elite uh hangman page you know uh allied previously allied of course with other elite member cody rhodes and mjf who's going out against cody rhodes is there going to be some shenanigans i don't know maybe it is wrestling i love aew we'll see we'll see how this goes uh one other fact wardlow came out he did a little interference made his presence known so we're gonna keep seeing that he's definitely mjf's henchman henchman so that's what happened um with the diamond dozen match i call it the Dino diamond dozen the dynamite dozen match so next week page and, and hang and uh and mjf are gonna face off for that diamond ring uh, i'm calling mjf on this one he's gonna wear the ring that's the type of thing that kind of goes in his, you know, I'm better than you, I'm smarter than you kind of deal. He wears nicer clothes. You know, that sort of, that sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? Jericho comes out. He gets a pretty good promo. Some humorous stuff with Hager saying sorry in Jericho's stead. With Jericho can't, can't actually get the words out of his mouth. Uh, pretty funny. Uh, he's He claims that AEW Brass is going to thank him. Uh, SCU comes out. Scorpio Sky is hyped up. Scorpio cuts a little promo. He mocks Jericho. He talks about his high school crush, Melanie. Melody, the 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 crowd chants for. Her. It was beautiful. Uh, Jericho challenges Sky to a match. Um, I can't wait. And then SCU does a little bit of reverse psychology, saying, "Oh, it better not be a championship match." And eventually, uh, Jericho sort of uh, tricked into. To challenging Scorpio Sky to a championship match. So this is really cool. Will Sky win? I don't know. My predictions are always bad. I would say, yeah, Sky's going to win, but I don't think so. Um, on TV, um, I don't know. Maybe. AEW really does like to throw curveballs, though they, they're they pretty smart with their with how they how they do things. So we'll, we'll see. I'm going to say no, Sky won't win, but I think it's going to be a really good match. Um, of course, after these two kind of hash it out in the ring verbally, um, it's got to get physical and inner circle comes out. There's pandemonium, there's chaos. Uh, Luchasaurus comes out. Uh, Jurassic, Sp Jurassic Express comes out. Luchasaurus and Hagar have a little stare down, which I thought was pretty awesome. Uh, of course, Luchasaurus stays in the ring for a quick match against Peter Avalon. Uh, that was about, you know, a minute long. Uh, what I like about Peter Avalon is that people hate him, and he's really good at getting the crowd riled up. What I dislike about Peter Avalon is his haircut. He needs to change it. Just, you know, you're a librarian. Get it? That ponytail's got to go. I mean, it's 
very 90s. Not that there's anything wrong with the 90s. I grew up in the 90s, right? I was a 90s teen. Uh, but it's kind of dorky now. My opinion, just my opinion, right? Cut the hair, Peter. Cut the hair. But people really hate him. <laughs> That's what I like about Peter Avalon. Okay, so the next big match, uh, we had PP versus PP. That is Private Party versus the Proud and Powerful or Santana and Ortiz. Uh, Santana Ortiz pretty much kept a private party out of the skies most of this match. Um, there was good pacing, I felt. It started off slow. The storytelling was really good. Um, some good shady tag team work from Santana and Ortiz. Uh, they really controlled the match. It was very slow and methodical for a lot of it. Uh, private party started to make a comeback. They started hitting those high-flying spots. There were some weird pinning shenanigans. Um, you know, the wrong Ortiz wasn't the legal man. Uh, but Nick Jackson came out, distracted Santana and Ortiz, and it really it, it allowed Private Party to get a chance to win, and they did. Uh, Sammy Guevara came out, attacked Nick Jackson, then came out Dustin Rhodes, uh, and that's sort of how that segment ended. So a uh, good match between Santana and Ortiz uh, and Private Party. I love all those guys in the ring. Uh, it was a good, uh, it was good. So I think they were the, what, what do they call them? The number one and the number, two, the number two and number three ranked tag teams. And so I guess that would switch at this point. Um, I really like Private Party. Uh, I want to see them have an, another match against the Young Bucks. I thought their, their, um, their championship tournament match was amazing. And I'd love to see that again. Of course, I'd like to see them uh, match up against SCU. Uh, so... We'll see what happens. We I don't really know what the next pay per view is going to be, but whatever it is, and they haven't really set it up yet. Um, they're they're obviously building towards it, so they have some interesting threads going through, you know, in their story storylines and their their booking. So, final match of the evening. Darby Allen versus John Moxley. And this is one I was waiting for all week. Um, uh, but before that, I'm sorry, there was a little Omega video and we're going to see uh, Pac versus Kenny Omega next week in Chicago. That should be pretty awesome. Good hype. So starts off with a sneak, starts off uh, Mox versus Allen starts off with a sneak attack from Allen, but, and the match hadn't even started. Uh, Allen gets some good blows in, but Mox kind of takes control of the match from that point on. Uh, he just pummels Allen into the into the dirt constantly. Uh, once the match really gets started, it's the same kind of thing. There was some good, you know, Allen, and kind of parallels with with Britt Baker here. Allen and Baker, they both are really good at getting looking like they're getting beat. Allen especially it's kind of like his thing he's that uh you know smaller guy takes a lot of damage can get hurt but he keeps on going no matter what kind of deal um so darby just still kind of sold everything as usual that's just being thrown and mox really beat the crap out of darby put him in the body bag was stomping on him i thought that was fantastic uh the best though see to me a good wrestling match comes down to how it ends. It could kind of be mediocre, right? This was an okay match, I thought. Like, it was pretty... Br well, it was a, a little better than okay. Uh, but it was a brutal match. Like, it was hard-hitting. Um, Moxley, and you know, was biting him. And Allen was doing some messed-up finger work to, to Mox. And, but it ended so good. Uh, Darby Allen got a coffin drop right on to Moxley, who put him into a sleeper. Allen almost reversed it. And then... Uh, they got up onto the, the ropes. That's when Moxie started biting Darby Allen. And then he put him into a paradigm shift off the ropes and got a pin. Freaking phenomenal. Uh, what a great ending. And I think that's what makes a wrestling match. If I had to diagram a match, and, and this is just, these, these are all my opinions here, right? Like I'm, I'm not a wrestling professional. I don't know, you know, how to, how to truly judge a match, but I've seen a lot of matches. I've watched wrestling for 
you know, 30 plus years. And how it starts is important. The moves that are done are important. Who sells what is important. But the most important element is how it ends, right? I've, you know, like for example, let's go to the match. Uh, I want to see, yeah, w w let's go last week where uh, Inner Circle faced off against SCU for the titles. Scorpio Sky pinned Chris Jericho, which was great, but he did it with a cradle roll up. To me, super boring, uh, totally unexciting. It leaves a lot to be desired, and but but I see what they were leading up to. They were leading up to this confrontation between Scorpio Sky and Chris Jericho and a match for the title. So yeah, at the time I didn't. I thought it was uh. Right, like for an individual match, sort of like, well, okay, that wasn't a, an exciting ending. I've seen better, but I see the story that they're weaving now, and so it makes sense. With this match, I mean, the succession of moves that came that led up to that paradigm shift were just like intense, right? Coffin drop into a sleeper, right? Like so. Alan got him, or Mox got him into a sleeper right when he landed that coffin drop. But then Alan almost reversed it and pinned Mox, almost. And that's when Mox dragged him up to the top, bit his face. I'm just repeating myself at this point. Bit his face and hit him with the paradigm shift off the ropes. But it was it was good. It was intense, and it really told um, it really told the story. Now, are they going to fight again? I hope so. Or is Mox going to be like, hey, I need another challenger. I would hate for Darby just to be another notch on the belt i want to see i want to see the stakes get raised and so we'll see what happens in chicago next week um most importantly we know that Pac will be facing off against kenny omega they've already had one really great match uh i'm going to predict that Pac wins again and it's going to continue to make kenny omega act a little weird in any case that is it for us tonight on aew dynamite breakdown I am evillaz905 here on twitch.tv. That's E-V-I-L-A-Z 905. Give me a follow if you enjoy it. If you're listening or watching on YouTube, this is The Lazarus Effect. That's the name of my channel, and I am The Lazarus Man. Give me a like and subscribe, and you'll get more of this. I also stream video games right now. We're doing Pokemon Sword and Shield, so I'm going to have a lot of that content. But I'm always going to have AEW content every week, no matter what. And with that, as always, take it sleazy.